Marriage equality has been made the law of the land today. And, and it is cause to celebrate, but for trans folks, we know that this is just, this is really not <laughs> the biggest thing for us, right? Because we know, we know as transgender people, just walking down the street, particularly for trans women of color like me, just walking down the street, we're making it home without getting harassed, without getting yelled at, without being kicked or screamed at, or harassed by the police is a very big deal. A Supreme Court had came down with the decision that um, same-sex couples can marry in any state. At the same time, you know, like when we look at discriminations, what it means is, you know, yes, they can get married, but they can still be fired from um, other places. And transgender people are not as subtle in some ways because we were pretty open about who we are, our gender identity. So it's much easier for us to become the target. My name is Belisha A. Elizondo. I'm also known as Belisha Flames. I'm a screaming queen, a pioneer, a legend, an icon, a diva, a 28-year survivor of AIDS, a Vietnam veteran, and this year's Lifetime Achievement Grand Marshal 2015 for San Francisco Pride. I have more history than Janet Mock, Laverne Cox, and Caitlyn Jenner all put together and then some. They have nothing compared to what I have, nothing compared to what I have lived. Ask the trans person. Everyone has an exciting story. And I would tell you, having no, now that I know quite a few, trans people have maybe the most exciting stories of anyone, okay? Um, for example, Sean Dorsey is a local um, San Francisco-based dancer and he did a show called Lou, and it's all about Lou Sullivan, who was one of the very, very first F to M's who transitioned in the San Francisco area. So like, I think that the history is there, but we just have to find it and then find ways of getting it out to people. I'm gonna go back a little bit because to the, to the years of the, uh, of the Comptons, the kids, or the kids that had been thrown out of their family, been thrown out like trash, like, you know, they, when you found out you were gay or a, or a sissy, people, your families actually kicked you out, no matter how old you were. So a lot of people came to San Francisco to start a new life. And I said, oh my God, a whole bunch of people like us. So uh, me and my friend Tommy and Bernie used to play hooky from school and come to San Francisco. At Jane Compton's cafeteria, we would sit there and drink coffee because it was cheap. And it was the only source of socializing or help that we could get help each other because at the time that we were there, it was our gay community. One night, the, the, the policemen came and started harassing us like they always used to do. And uh, the one of the girls, when you're cornered, you're going to fight back. And one of the girls uh, threw a cup of coffee on a policeman, and the policeman called for recruits. And when you're cornered, you're going to fight, of course. The windows were broken. Uh, there was a, a newsstand that was on, put on fire, and uh, the cop car had been turned over or put on fire. I don't remember which one was it, but one of those things. And after that, after about one or two days, it went back to normal, like nothing had happened. It wasn't in the media, it wasn't in the newspaper, it was only word of mouth, and a little newspaper that you see right over in the corner is one of the copies of the, the actual uh, document that was uh, from the Jim Compton's cafeteria riot. It was the first known instance of collective, militant, queer resistance to police harassment in United States history. 
in my opinion as a filmmaker, the best way to shift people's perceptions is through the power of film. Any kind of art, any kind of expression, um, and through that education. One day we saw the Christine Jorgensen movie, the 1951 sex change that came from Germany. And then I said, oh my God, that's who I am. That's what I want to be. I don't know how the hell I'm going to get there, but I'm going to get there. The film in Frameline this year is called Float. Uh, and the purpose of the film is to celebrate all different kinds of bodies. And it was really interesting by the end of the filming and that weekend, uh, filming with all these really amazing people who wanted to be naked and celebrate all different kinds of trans bodies. By the end of it, I was like, bodies are awesome. I think my body's kind of awesome. And you know, that's nice because that's not really something that we're necessarily taught um, in the media. That's what really makes California a wonderful place. The best thing about being here is its diversity, right? We have every shade, color you can imagine. And that's what I think, I think there's real strength uh, through diversity and hopefully we can embrace that. Being different is a good thing. I personally would love to see more gender, more gender queer representations in the mainstream. So more representations of just all kinds of non-binary identi identities. More transmasculine representation in the mainstream would be nice. I think there's a lot more types of transgender people because transgender people are every kind of person. So there's a lot of representation that is still coming to the mainstream. For some reason, the gay and lesbian community doesn't accept the transgender community. Uh, and, and it's kind of like sad because we're the ones that started the gay movement, not only here, but at Stonewall. And, uh, but we're always last. I figured that the lesbian and gay community stayed in the closet, made their money, got educated, where the transgender community could not do that because if we would have done that, we wouldn't be who we are today. But when you're poor, you can't make people listen. It's the money that counts in, in, in the United States, and it's, it's true. I tell my gay friends it's so much easier being gay. I tell my lesbian friends it's so much, be well, all the other letters in LGB and Q are easier than the T. Okay, there's a reason it's at the end. We're the last to, how should I say, eat at the banquet table. I'm gonna be the spoke person for our trans community because I've been the long, I've lived the longest. I've gone through hell. I've been raped. I've been thrown in jail. I've been beaten up. I've been harassed. I've been everything. And, and I told myself, it's time for the T to be in front of the LGB, you know. The T is the one that started Jim Compton's cafeteria. The T started uh, Stonewall. All we need is respect, consideration, and understanding. That's all we ask. To have people hate us or don't understand. It doesn't take long to just have an open heart and an open mind. That's all we ask from a trans community. Being trans means that I get to be in a place where I understand the dynamics and I get to be in the intersections of privilege and oppression more so than a lot of other people. It's a never-ending journey. You don't transition, you don't arrive at the station and everything's great, right? The problems, the, the, the opportunities, your life, 
before transition is going to look a whole lot like your life after transition, other than people are going to view you differently. They're going to question you. They're going to, how should I put it? You probably won't have the gravitas. You probably won't have the respect that you did before. No matter how you call it, no matter how you deal with it, we, need, we are here. We're not going nowhere. We're growing by the thousands. I would say if you're questioning your gender, you are definitely not alone. Uh, there's a lot of people questioning their gender, and it's a process that might seem super overwhelming, but is actually totally normal in figuring out who you are as a person. It's one aspect of a gajillion uh, ways of being yourself, and questioning it is just getting to know yourself better. And that's how it grows. You, you, you get the seed, you plant it, you water it, and then it grows. And that's how the idea of all this that I am today finally gets to show the world that we are trans community. We have no choice, like the gay community does have no choice to be gay. We have no choice but to be who we are, transgender people. My saying is, it is what it is, and I am where I'm supposed to be right now. If someone can successfully change their gender, there's nothing they can't do. There's no mountain too high. There's no prize too far. We trans folks are the winners. And faster, hate the thought of my blood and the pinpricks of laughter.